In this video, we're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to register a payment for one of the vendor bills that we just created. So let's go into accounting and we'll go into vendor bills. And we'll go into, let's say, uh, our vendor bill number 21 here. So registering a payment in Odoo is simply telling the system that we are paying for this bill. Whether that's paying it by check, if we're paying it manually, maybe we're paying it in cash, maybe we're going to process a NACHA file, maybe we're going to do a wire transfer out of the system or pay with credit card out of the system. In any case, what we want to do is register a payment. Now, as a quick mention, it's not required to register a payment in order to reconcile this bill, but it is helpful and it's recommended. So if I click on our register payment button here, we'll see that we have this uh, widget that gets popped up. It asks us which journal, so maybe we have a bank account and a credit card, and depending on what journal we're going to pay this from, we're going to select that journal. And here we're gonna select the bank. Our payment method is going to depend on the payment methods that we have set up in this bank. So here we have manual, which is just pretty much anything else outside of the system. We have checks, which will allow us to process a check within the system and print those out. We have NACHA payments, which will allow us to batch up our payments together and create a NACHA file that we can then upload into our bank account to facilitate ACH payments. And if we had our, our uh, vendor's bank account set up, we would select that here, which is specifically, um, or I'd rather say particularly interesting when we're looking at NACHA payments. So we'll leave that blank and we'll just say that the payment method is manual. We can set the amount here. This is the payment date and the memo. And the memo is important because we can utilize this for um, helping with our reconciliation process. Here I'll just create a payment. And what that does is mark our bill as in payment. You can see that updated in the chatter here as well. Now there's going to be several different statuses a payment can take, or rather a bill can take. In payment simply means that we've made a payment, we registered the payment, however we did not reconcile that payment yet. So right now, um, it's in payment. Before we actually registered the payment, it, there was no status set. We could also have a partial payment. And then when we fully reconcile this with our bank journal, it's going to be marked as fully paid. So let's look at another example now where we'll uh, do a partial payment and see what comes up. So on our bill here for $30, we'll register a payment. We'll do the same thing, but this time we'll set $15. And we'll get another couple of options which says uh, the payment difference. Do we want to keep this open and we'll finish the payment? Or do we want to mark it as fully paid and maybe write off the difference into a different account? So if you need to write off some of the balance for whatever reason, we can do that. Otherwise, we can keep it open, which will mark this as partial. And at the bottom of our screen, what that does is create a payment. And this payment is linked to our vendor bill. And a vendor bill can have one or many payments. And here we see that we have paid $15 on 01 27 2024. And if we click on this icon here, we can view this. And this is going to bring us to our payments menu item. So accounts or account.payment, which is a model in Odoo. And we see all the details about our payment. So this was a send payment as opposed to a receive. This is the vendor, the amount, the date, the memo, the journal we used, the payment method we used, and the vendor bank account. And at the top of our screen, we see that this is linked to a one bill because it can be linked to several bills. And we see the journal entry that was generated. And the journal entry that's generated is debiting our accounts payable to clear out what we owe. And it's crediting our outstanding payments to increase our outstanding payments. Now that outstanding payments account is sort of uh, something like an on-deposited funds in, in other softwares where it's basically saying that these are the payments that are outgoing from that bank account. And the reason why that's important is because we're going to reconcile our bank statement lines against this outstanding payment line. And when our bank statement line comes in, we'll reconcile the $15 that we paid as a bank statement line against this $15 in our outstanding payments account. We can navigate to all of our payments by going to our vendors payments and we'll see a list view of all the payments we made. The first one was $60 and the next one was 15. And we have this filtered at the top of our screen by vendor payments because there will also be customer payments. 
we can batch payments together. So that's why we see a batch payment um, column here. But we'll look at that in another video. And if we go to reporting and we take a look at our balance sheet, we'll see some balance inside of our, um, see, our current asset accounts. Inside of our outstanding payments here, we see a $75 value. That's going to be the $60 and $15 that we register payment for. And that's the outstanding payments that we will reconcile. Now, just keep in mind that there's also outstanding receipts. And that's going to be for any items that we marked as in paint or we registered a payment for that we're going to receive. So we have two accounts. They're separated in Odoo, not netted out. So we'll have outstanding payments and then outstanding receipts for payments coming in. And those will be reconciled on our bank journal. And as a quick mention, if we go to our bank journal and we look at our configurations inside our bank journal, under our incoming payments and outgoing payments, uh, let's go to outstanding payments here. We can set different outstanding payments accounts for each bank. We can do it by payment method, or we can just create a new account and set it for each bank, which we'll do in another video. However, I just wanted to mention that. So if you wanted to have different outstanding payments and receipts account for each bank account, you can totally do that. And it's recommended so that we can differentiate between those bank accounts and what line should show up when we reconcile for that bank. Otherwise, we'll see all of our payments. And these are going to be these payment methods are going to be all of the options that we've seen when we were registering the payment for that bill. So we see manual, we see checks, we see NACHA. And these are the options that are available. The name we see can be customized, so we can customize this as we see fit. And our outstanding payments account is blank now because we're using the default one that we have in our configurations settings. And if we scroll down to some of our default accounts, we'll see our outstanding payments and outstanding receipts account for post bank transactions payments in. We have our bank suspense account, our internal transfer account. But importantly for this video, we have our outstanding receipts as well as our outstanding payments account. So that was a deep dive into everything you need to know about registering a payment for now. In other videos, we'll look at some other examples such as creating checks and, and uh, processing NACHA files.